Hey, it's Chris. Would you like to feel happier, more productive, maybe more interesting, more accomplished? Then you watch the right video because today I've got some apps and frameworks for your life that can team up to help make you unstoppable. We're gonna start with the apps, then the frameworks, and I've also got some rapid fire life upgrades for you. But first, this mind blowing realization. The only difference between who you are now and the you that you really wanna be, happier, fitter, more productive, whatever, is a system that you haven't yet put in place and some time for the system to do its thing. Usually people try something that they think will be good and they don't see immediate results, so they give up. So time progresses and nothing changes. But if you put a working system in place and you trust the system, then you're already as good as the person that you wanna be. Now I've got some really simple and powerful frameworks that you can integrate into your life to move things things forward to get some traction, make some progress in your personal and professional life. But first, here's some really awesome apps that I've been storing up that I think would be beneficial to anybody out there. And of course, you can check the description for all the relevant links. Now, app number one is called Mem. It's a self-organizing workspace, and you're gonna find it right in the App Store. This is an AI-powered app, and it's designed to amplify your creativity, to automate the things you find mundane, and also to keep you organized automatically. Honestly, if all you get out of this video is this app, it's gonna be well worth your time to have watched. See this little purple app down on the dock here? That is the Brain.fm app. And with it, you can stream music that's made for your brain, specifically to help you focus. This is not a gimmick, this is science back. It's science that you can hear. On the left, you see the resting brain. On the right, your brain on Brain.fm. I just rediscovered this app after years of not using it, and it's been a renaissance of personal productivity. Session is an excellent focus timer designed to help you use the Pomodoro technique to better focus. It's on all your devices, and if you've never tried the Pomodoro, you have to try it. I've been putting it to use building my productivity course, and it's made this giant daunting task a whole lot more doable. But what really sets this app apart are the amazing analytics, number one, and also the really great calendar integration. Another app that recently got a huge upgrade, and that's what I wanna talk about, is Jasper, which just launched the brand new Jasper chat function. And unless you've been living under a rock lately, you know that chat GPT has taken over the world. But Jasper chat is by far my favorite way to interact with AI using a chat interface and turn it into my personal oracle, which can brainstorm, research, write for me, even answer questions with lightning speed. This may replace Googling for you. Like here I chatted with it and asked it to brainstorm some ingenious ways to get the attention and engagement of some Twitter influencers. It gave me some answers. I told it to write me a sample tweet. It gave me a sample tweet so I could put it into action. Powerful stuff. There are also two important app updates and features that I just wanna make you aware of, even though I know you probably heard of the apps themselves because they're a really big deal. The first has to do with Todoist, the excellent task manager. Their team just pushed out a new AI assistant feature, which can actually help you figure out how to accomplish the tasks that you put inside the app. I also just have to double check and make sure that you know about one of my favorite features in the TickTick app, which is a great to-do app. It has intelligent management, calendar, reminders, etc. But I really wanna make sure you know about the Eisenhower Matrix feature inside because it's the best Eisenhower Matrix in any app ever. It's such a powerful way to help you figure out what you need to focus on, what's actually important. But the best part about it is that there's actually an Eisenhower Matrix widget that they give you, a big one and a smaller one, you can actually stick right on your home screen. And if you'd like to dig deeper into this kind of stuff, into the world of productivity, then you should definitely sign up for updates down in the description for my productivity course, which is coming out soon. All right, so much for the apps. Now let's move on to the systems and frameworks. This is the part of the video I'm really excited about, and I've actually still got plenty of apps to continue recommending as we go. So we're actually gonna hit two big frameworks and then we're gonna get to the rapid fire session. So you are here right now. Now my first framework that I wanna share with you is what I like to call my five sevens framework. So you probably heard that an object in motion stays in motion, that's the law of inertia. And actually it turns out a lot of people live their life that way. Whatever they're doing now, they're gonna be doing later because they're just staying on their current path. Why? Because it's what they were already doing. Not a great reason. And shout out to My First Million for that analogy, but that is not the right way to live. Instead, you should have a better idea of where you wanna end up, what it takes to get there, and then implement any course corrections that are gonna take you in the right direction. This is living by design rather than default. All right, so grab your Apple Pencil or get a piece of paper. You can just type this out as well. Basically, you're gonna make a bullet point list that has seven years, seven months, seven days, seven hours, and seven minutes. Now ask yourself, what would you really like to have accomplished 
in seven years from now. Could be personal, could be professional, but write it out. Next, ask yourself, what can you do in seven months time that's gonna get you closer to that seven year goal? Write it down on the seven month line. You probably see where this is going. What can you do in the next seven days, basically the next week, that will move the needle towards that seven month goal? That's the next thing that you wanna write down, and now we're getting more and more actionable by the line. Next, think about what you can do in the next seven hours, basically today that will move the needle towards that seven day goal. You're gonna write that in, and now we've made it to the seven minute mark. And this is what I love about this framework. This is where the rubber meets the road right now, and you'll start getting some traction towards the goal that's really far off today. The seven minute action item can be so simple, just writing an email, or buying a domain, or brainstorming. And then to keep this system rolling along, it'd be a good idea to reflect and realign everything once a week, every seven days. See how that seven pattern continues nicely and fits into your weekly schedule? What you can do is just set a serial reminder to remind you every seven days to check this out. And just like that, you've created a compass for yourself that you can use to orient the work that you're doing right now, which will help you make real progress towards meaningful goals. Alternatively though, you can use the Thrive app, which is a simple goal planner to help you plan things out as well. And it has its own bucket of useful features. Now it's time for the next big framework, then we'll get to the rapid fire. So now I wanna introduce you to my three C's framework. So once you've got your compass figured out and your life is pointed in the right direction, the next best thing you can do, in my opinion, is implement the three C's, which stand for collect, curate and create. This is something that I've been using for years, but it still feels like magic every time I use it because I can pull together an almost fully formed project in a matter of minutes simply by collecting all the interesting ideas that I have and the information I encounter in real time as I go about my day. So let's start with the first C, collect. Whenever you have an interesting idea or observation, you wanna get it out of your head immediately and into an app. Could be like a dedicated note, that's what I'm using. You can see my observations note right here. And I've also got one for questions, which you can see here. But it'd be just as useful, maybe even easier to use something like the drafts app to capture things as well and make sure they're tagged. But as you're going through your day and your work sparks things in your head, you've come up with a solution all of a sudden to something that's been bugging you for a while. Or maybe you've just observed a trend. Instead of just moving on, make sure you get that stuff into the app. And the key is to make this as friction free as possible. So for me, that means setting up some widgets with quick shortcuts. And I also go out of my way to track every question that pops into my head because on the other side of every question is information that somebody else is gonna wanna know or a solution that you can come up with, both of which are gonna become very valuable to you in the future. So you're collecting your ideas, epiphanies, questions, nothing slipping through the cracks, but then you also wanna make sure that you capture interesting information that you run into from books, audiobooks, articles, social media, videos, and then make sure that all of that stuff makes its way into a central location, which in my case, I choose to use the My Mind app, which you can see remembers everything without the need to organize any of it. But this system that I've ended up using here is sort of like a building your second brain from Tiago Forte, light. All the ideas and information that you save from yourself and from other people, Tiago calls knowledge assets, which I love, but I don't really have the patience, I feel like it's just not a perfect fit for me to sit there and highly curate and organize everything like Tiago does. So just dumping all my interesting information nuggets into my mind and just using my mind search feature because it's AI powered and it pulls everything up for me that I need without having to tag it and organize it as long as I go to the trouble of saving it, which is just friction free, I'm telling you. That's what works best for me. So I'll search my mind and then that'll dig up all the relevant assets, the knowledge assets that I've saved. And then I'll go ahead and just dump those into an app like MindNode, the mind mapping app. And like I said, 90% of whatever project I find myself needed to work on, whether it's a speech or presentation or a script or an article, a research report, whatever it is, it's all there waiting for me. And all I have to do is rearrange it, flesh it out, add some meat to the bones and call it a day. And that is the power of collecting as you go, putting it in a note, curating that collection using an app like My Mind doesn't have to be, and then creating from that curation. Can't wait to see what you get done with that. Now, I know your attention span is waning, so we're gonna kick into rapid fire mode. I've got eight more frameworks to just rattle off really quick for you. Just because I'm going fast doesn't mean that these aren't life-alteringly powerful. Rapid fire number one, track the small wins. Look, if you're ever feeling just stuck in a rut, 
like you just can't get any meaningful traction, you're just unmotivated, start by tracking the small wins. By small wins, I just mean, you know, when you wake up in the morning and you drink a glass of water instead of coffee because that's healthier, or maybe you make the bed right away, neither of those things maybe did you wanna do, but you did them, those are small wins. And you can use an app like Count That Now, for instance, and set up a tracker called Small Wins. I've got one on my Apple Watch here, actually, and as you go throughout the day, track those small wins. You'll see that momentum building up because small wins I've found lead to bigger wins and those big wins lead to solid accomplishments. Next up, data is the new oil. What I mean by this is we live in the information age, the data age, the AI age, and companies have a lot of data on you that they use to exploit you basically. But do you have any data on yourself? that you can exploit to better yourself, to benchmark, to improve, to motivate. I'm a big advocate of tracking stuff. You can use an app like A Tracker here to start tracking your time. It's very simple, works well, and doesn't have to be just your time. It could be for anything in your life. When I started tracking my weight by measuring myself every day, weighing myself, wow, that kicked me into action. Track yourself, get the data, benchmark yourself, and improve. Number three in the rapid fire, MVM, minimum viable method. If there's ever something that you wanna do but you feel like it's too intimidating, it's too overwhelming, think about what the minimum viable method would be. For example, I've wanted to start journaling and reflecting at the end of every day, but I've always felt like there's no way I'm gonna have the headspace or the time to actually stick with it and do it. The minimum viable method that I came up with in my head was just write three words per line in a bullet list, instead of sitting there and writing a whole page about what I did that day, I'll just write something like filmed a video, right? Or ate healthy. Really great for tracking things like gratitude, which by the way, if you reflect on things that you're grateful for, it is proven that you will be a happier person. You should try it. Remember in the beginning when I asked you if you would like to become more interesting? Well, interesting people are interesting because they have interesting experience largely to tell about. How can you get an interesting experience? You don't have a lot of money maybe to go travel the globe, right? Or you, maybe you feel like you haven't done anything of note. Well, look, this is what I call the 90 for 90 hero's journey. If you've ever heard of the storytelling technique, the hero's journey, you see it in books and movies all the time, but typically your hero starts out in an ordinary world. There's a call to adventure. He doesn't wanna go. He meets a mentor. He crosses the threshold. There's some tests. There's allies. There's enemies. He comes up with an approach. Things go really wrong. There's an ordeal, death, rebirth. There's a reward. You seize the sword or you get something to level up, right? You're learning as you go. There's the road back after you've kind of accomplished what you need to do. There's like a resurrection and you return and you're back from your journey. You've experienced things. You're not the same person. And here's how you can implement it. I would advocate doing a 90 for 90. Do something, try it out. Maybe it's getting fit or maybe it's a certain productivity method. You know, do something for 90 days and at the end of that 90 days, measure the results. If you're a content creator especially, you're gonna have all kinds of content and valuable insights that you can share with somebody for trying something for 90 days. And you can actually use something like the Day One app to easily document whatever journey you take. Number five, a little is a lot. If ever in life you're in doubt of what you're doing, you probably should be more ambitious than you are. And if there's one thing that kills people's ambitions more than almost anything else, it's the thought that there's just not enough time in the day, right? You don't have time, you're busy, you've got a family, kids, whatever it is. This is where a little is a lot really comes into play. If you can find 10 minutes in the day to do something like read, learn for 10 minutes a day, that adds up to five hours a month. I love this, I use it all the time. I'll give you an example. When I was starting to get more into exercise a while back, I realized that, you know what, I don't wanna sit down here in the basement and camp out on the exercise equipment for half an hour or an hour, but I think I can do seven or eight minutes. And it turned out on the elliptical, I could go about a mile in eight minutes. Well, I started doing that every day, and pretty soon I was racking up 30 miles that I wouldn't have gone otherwise every month. Number six, temptation bundle. This actually comes from the book Atomic Habits, but if there's something that you don't wanna do and something that you do wanna do, pair them up so you can only do the thing that you really wanna do after you do the thing that you don't wanna do or while you're doing it. So if there's a certain show that you wanna watch, only watch it when you're on the treadmill, for instance. For me, I know there's a certain project I'm dying to start, but I'm not gonna let myself start it until I'm done with my productivity course, right? Number seven, make lots of small bets. What does this mean? You don't have to do something that's make or break, 
and that's the only thing that you're working on, right? Instead, you can make several small bets. So I'm doing this in my life as a content creator. I'm not going all in only on YouTube as a way to earn revenue, right? I've branched out into affiliate stuff. I've done wallpaper. I sell things. I'm making some online courses that I can sell. I'm partnering with somebody else to offer a potential theme for Notion. One of those could turn into something really big for me. In fact, several of them have, and I'm always making more. And all the while, while I'm doing my main thing, which is the YouTube gig, right? Basically, you're increasing the surface area of your luck when you make these small bets. And last but not least, number eight here, I feel like being successful in life really comes down to being consistent, having self-control, the level of discomfort you're willing to put up with and for how long, and patience. Grit, I'm very influenced by the book Grit from Angela Duckworth. I'm kind of talking about that in the productivity course. I mentioned it a couple times already. If you haven't read it, highly worth reading. I'll link it up down below. But keep that in mind. The things that are out of your control, like opportunity or luck, you don't even have to focus on. Be a gritty person, buckle down, be consistent, keep showing up day after day, get your systems in place, and you're gonna make it. Woo, all right, that was a long video, <laughs> at least to record. I'm not sure how the edit turned out, but I hope you liked it. Leave me your favorite framework, your favorite app that you found down in the description with the time frame, so that other people can jump right to the good stuff if you don't mind. Also, if you have some other stuff that you'd like to add, either an app or a framework, let me know, let the community know. Everyone wants to see it. Otherwise, make sure that you get signed up to get pinged when my productivity course launches soon, I promise. I know people are like, where is it? It's coming, and don't forget to check out our newsletter. People really love that thing. I wish for you to discover it because it'll help you find all kinds of really cool apps and accessories and other stuff that you can't find elsewhere. So check it out. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Later.